Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. All right, let's dive in. Hello again. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about making the game's starting area. The process of making this area is pretty much the same as for the last area, so let's just rapid fire through some models. Terrain mesh. Now give me some trees. Okay, nice, but I think it's a little dark. Let's liven up the place. Okay, gotta drop in some boulders now. So that's all I can make with the models I have. Time to make some new ones. First, these flat rocks for platforming. And now the broken cart. All I'm really missing here is just the wheel since I'm gonna build the rest of the cart from the planks I already have. There should also be a tiny one here in the corner. Now the helpful rock pointing you in the right direction. I made a new shader where the green vertex channel becomes an emission mask. I think adding some foliage will top off this little montage I got going here nicely. Okay, so now I'm missing a couple more complex models, so let's go over them one by one. Starting with these red glowing mushrooms. So here's the model I sculpted. I want to make it three separate models. One for the base, one for this kind of flower, let's call it. And then have this little part in the middle be a separate one as well. I want to do this to give some variation to the mushrooms on the level easily. I think this guy deserves his own dedicated texture. So as you can see, separating the mushroom into three models make it easier to make them have different height or I can lay out these little baby mushrooms around easily now. I made the shader a little more interesting than just using the textures I painted. As you can see, I try to give it this effect of kind of this inner glow. So like they're a little translucent and have something glowing deeper inside. The way I did this is very simple. I just used the Fresnel node. There are probably like hundreds of tutorials online on the Fresnel node, but very briefly, it's basically a black and white mask that gets driven by the viewing angle. So if I look at this plane head on, it's pretty black, but as I start looking at it from the side, it gets brighter. So now by inverting the Fresnel node, I have this glow that seems to always be in the middle of the model. Now near the mushrooms, there's this cat cat caterpillar, however you say it. 
Anyway, let's go make this cute little guy. I made him a simple skeleton for the bounce animation. Now to make the catter 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 put catter put cat 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 Now to make the cattle pillar launch rayman, I add in a box collision and then the cat the bug mesh itself and then add the va variable jump z velocity that's gonna set Rayman's z velocity whenever he collides with the with this bug. And here in the event graph, all we have is on component begin overlap. When the collision box overlaps with the player pawn through an interface, we add in z velocity to Rayman and set his launch state to true. I'm using interfaces here, but from what I've heard. I don't know if that's correct. I've heard that using a cast instead is, isn't is worse performance wise because the player pawn will always be loaded in memory anyway. If anyone can confirm or, or deny in the comments, I'd be greatly appreciated. Anyway, after the player is launched, the caterpillar plays its bounce animation and plays a bouncy sound. And while we're on the topic of cute animals, there are these butterflies here flying around that I gotta make. And also these turtles that, well, you know, are doing something. It's kind of cool how when you run up, they kind of hide. You can also kick them. There's also one animal that's not so cute. Actually, a bit scary. There's another one up over there. The butterflies kind of seem to start flying around you once you come close enough and once you get out of their range they kind of scatter I guess. I'll try to make something similar. For the butterfly model I guess you could say I left it in the blocking stage. It's just such a small part of the screen that there's really no point in going into more detail. And here's the model painted in in Substance Painter. I kept it all in the base color because this model is going to have a translucent shader without any pins or specularity or even like a normal map I think. I made the wing flapping in the material itself so this is a static mesh not a rigged model. The material is translucent like I said so the butterfly is a little bit see-through Oh, actually, there is a normal map here. I was wrong. But I think this isn't necessary. If I delete this, it looks exactly the same. So I use a Fresnel again for the emissive. And for the rotation of the wings, I use the rotate about axis again. This time without the normal fixing because you can't really see the normals here anyway. So to have the wings animated, I plug in into the rotation amount a sign function that takes in a time node. To control how far the wings flap, I have this rotation amount user parameter. And I use a vertex color again to mask out what should be rotating. That's why the wings are rotating only and not the whole butterfly itself. I have these four nodes over here to kind of divide the mesh in half. So the right half is black and the left half is white. That's because without this, the wings do something like this. So they're basically rotating together. So to fix this, I kind of divide this model in two halves. The white part is equal to one and the black part is minus one. So I can multiply the wing rotation by this mask and the wing that is in minus one, that's in black, will have its rotation inverted, which fixes the effect. Now, maybe let me explain why those four nodes do that so you don't have to take what I'm saying at face value. I take the absolute world position of this butterfly and convert it to its local space. So now the pivot point is zero, zero, zero. And let's take, for example, the Y axis. So this green one over here, 
every point on the butterfly that's to the left of his pivot point has some kind of positive y axis value and everything to the right has a negative value that's why i use this mask green node because the y component is green so what this does is essentially masks out the x component or x axis and the z axis and just leaves me with the y axis and now if i feed that into a sign node everything that's on the left of the butterfly's pivot point returns one and everything to the right of the butterfly's pivot point returns minus one moving on i also have this per instance random node here because i'm going to use instant static meshes every one of these butterflies is going to have its own random index or random seed some kind of random number basically so if if i add this to the time that way it's not going to be like where all the butterflies are flapping their wings together and then i have a very simple setup for the up and down movement so just using a sign function i offset the butterfly in the z axis now here's the blueprint i have this box as a parent which is going to act as the bounds in which these butterflies follow rayman so when rayman overlaps with this box the butterflies start following them following him then i have a track thanks to which i can make the butterflies move around on a spline i have this one particle system that uses the flare texture that's used in the fairy council episode it's very similar to the particle system near the button except it doesn't move like in a vortex i also add the point light to give the to make them kind of illuminate the scene and the butterfly is an instant static mesh that actually gets called in the constructor so this is the first blueprint that utilizes the constructor what this does allow it allows me to kind of change this blueprint in editor let me show you what i mean so here we have the butterflies as you can see i made a track for them and now in the blueprint i have these settings like butterflies amount and it updates on the fly so one or 20. i can also change the butterfly scale and distance between the butterflies on the curve i think it's going to be easier this time if i show this working in action and then we go over the blueprint so there, there they are flying in the distance if you can see the light source seems to be snapped to the middle butterfly also except for that one particle effect that's attached to the blueprint every butterfly emits its own other particle effect although it might be for you a little bit hard to distinguish which particle effect is coming from the butterfly and which one is this global one i was showing in the beginning and so they're following me as long as i'm in their box if i leave they leave back to their original place and start just flying around where they were okay so let's go over the construction graph and the event graph now starting with the construction graph so i have this butterfly amount variable that allows me to choose how many but butterflies are flying around in that spot and i plug it into a for loop a for loop will execute code a set amount of times so if i tell the for loop to spawn a butterfly and I set the butterfly amount to three, then the for loop will spawn a butterfly three times. Okay, so in this for loop, first I add an instance of a butterfly and I set its transforms to be at the right spot along the spline. To find its location, I first get a reference to the spline. I multiply the index of the for loop with the distance between the butterflies. The index is basically which iteration of the for loop is being executed currently, starting at zero. So if the index is zero, then this is the first loop. If the index is one, then we're talking about the second loop and so on. So if the index is zero, the first butterfly will spawn on the spline track at zero distance. Distance is basically the length of the spline. Yeah, so if the index of the butterfly is one, for example, and our distance between butterflies is 50, then the next butterfly will spawn 50 units along the spline in front of the first one. I also rotate the butterflies in their Z axis to kind of face where they are flying to, towards. That makes them, their movement a little more natural. And then for every butterfly, I add a Niagara particle system. This one over here, that kind of looks maybe heavier because the stars are falling. Let me show you the first one, what, what it looked like for comparison. The first one is a little more floaty 
while the second one is kind of like this. I make an array out of all of these Niagara particle systems for later because in event tick I will want to copy every butterfly's location to the particle system's location so it, so it seems like the particle system is spawned by the butterfly. So that's it for the constructor, now let's move on to the event graph. We have these kind of three parts, I would say. Let's go over first the overlapping, because this is the simplest one. So if Rayman overlaps with that box, then I set the is following player to true. And once he leaves the box, I set the is following player back to false. So now in event tick, we check if is following player is true. And if it is true, I, I want to set this butterfly track world location to Rayman's world, lo world location. And that's simple, except I want to use a lerp so they don't just snap and they actually travel to, to Rayman. And that also would be very simple and wouldn't require all of these nodes over here, except for the fact that the way the lerp works is that the further Rayman is from the butterfly track, the faster the butterflies will fly to Rayman, which isn't ideal. I would like them to kind of travel to Rayman at, at a steady speed. So this is what these nodes handle over here. Basically, they check the distance to Rayman and the higher the distance is, the smaller the lerp speed is while still clamping it to some kind of reasonable values. So the lerp speed will never get, for example, less than one and more than four. But basically, if Rayman is very far, then the lerp speed is one, but if Rayman is near them, the lerp speed increases. So it kind of seems like they're moving towards Rayman at a steady rate. Coming back to the branch, if is following player is false, then what I want to do is have the butterflies move back to their original location. So basically the track lerps back to its starting location, also scaling the lerp speed to, main st to maintain a steady travel speed. Then there's the butterfly movement along the spline. I made this move along spline function that takes in the instance index. So we have this for loop again that iterates over every butterfly. Let's check out the, this function. Okay, I'm gonna be going over this as if we're talking about the butterfly with index zero. It, and just keep in mind, this does the same thing for every butter, other butterfly. So first we get the location of the butterfly with the index zero in this example. And then we feed in that location to determine what's this butterfly's distance along this spline at this location. And I set this to a variable. Then I increase the distance value by some kind of speed that I can set. The higher the speed I make, the faster the butterflies move along the spline, of course. And then I update this butterfly's location to be at the location of our new distance. So this is kind of the same thing that we had in the constructor, except it's just moving the butterfly along the spline and not just spawning him in a set location. This part over here is just to make the butterfly go around the loop. So if the distance becomes larger than the spline length, then I set the distance to zero and set the butterfly's location to this di new distance. Okay, let's move back out of this function. Now all this does is attaches those particle systems to the butterflies. So for every particle system I created, I set it, its world location to the butterfly's location with a matching index. And once this loop is completed, I still need to move along the spline the global particle system and the light source. So for the global particle system, I attach it to the butterfly with the last index. That's because actually the last butterfly is the one that's moving in the front and not the first one, a little counterintuitive. And then for the point light, I kind of imagine it makes more most sense to have the light source coming out of the middle of all the, of all the butterflies. So I take the instance count and divide it by two and snap the light's location to whatever butterfly is in the middle of the group. And that's the whole butterfly system. Yeah, so I didn't make them scatter when they're not following Rayman, which probably wouldn't be too hard if I were to do this. I would make it where if the butterflies aren't following Rayman, I would make them travel to random locations in that overlap box. But I kind of like them flying around in the distance in unison like that. All right, in the next one, we'll continue with this environment. If you had a good time here, leave a like and subscribe and goodbye.